Um, so I want to thank everybody for coming, and particularly all those Vermonters who've gathered signatures and organized the process of raising money and building a campaign from nothing. I'm in Waterbury today because this is a town that has endured more than its share of its share of woes in the 21st century. This is a town that's seen 300-year floods in the last 15 years, uh, a town who's which has a housing shortage, which makes it nearly impossible to work, uh, to live here if you work here. And a school financing system, which leaves this reasonably prosperous town facing its third vote to, catch, uh, to pass a school budget. I've previously shared my concerns about the relationship between the governor and the legislature. And I think cooperation could give each side more of what they want, fewer taxes for the governor and more progress on climate change and housing and flood recovery from the legislature, for the legislature. This is a very hardworking and productive legislature. As is often the case with legislators, their reach sometimes exceeds their grasp, but this is a group of people who have made real progress on very difficult issues that many are afraid to tackle. Bipartisanship means more achievements and more progress than what Vermonters want and need. When I took over the governorship in the middle of a recession, the state's finances were in trouble and so were the pensions, principally because we were spending next year's dollars on today's problems. And we have learned the hard way not to do that. There is a lot more, but let's cut to the chase. Governor Scott's a popular governor. My polling shows that the most important issue for Vermonters is taxation. And the governor has talked a lot about this. Other major issues include health care and housing. And my polling shows that I can get within 10 points of Governor Scott because of my own fiscal record and my deep commitment to affordable health care. In theory, this is a winnable race, but I've been in state and national politics for a very long time. There's only one way to close a 10-point gap between two well-known candidates, and that is to run a scorched-earth negative attack campaign like ones being uh, run all over the country. I am incredibly proud that Vermont is not like Texas or Florida. where creating enemies out of women, gay people, and even librarians seems to be acceptable by both politicians and rewarded by the voters. I don't know if a campaign like that could get me elected, but I do know that it would be really harmful to our state and to our values. I am not a candidate for the office of governor. <clears throat> I will support our candidate. I'll work for them. I'll continue to work both before the election and afterwards to move Vermont towards affordable health care and universal health care. And I thank you for your patience, and I'm happy to take comments, questions, and in the tradition of uh, Vermont press, rude remarks is necessary. What was the tipping point for you as you looked at it over the last couple of weeks? When did it become apparent to you that, for the reasons that you just stated? Oh, uh, I've gone back and forth multiple times. Uh, and I really do. The, the, my greatest regret is how hard everybody worked to get me on the ballot, <laughs> which I think we could have succeeded, well, we, I think everybody already has the signatures. Uh, and I want to thank um, Jim uh, for all his, uh, the chairman of the party, for all uh, his, uh, Dan and now for all his uh, hard work on that. There were a lot of people who worked very, very hard. Mary Sullivan is here, and she's one of them. But there were a ton of people that really worked to do this. I was very excited about it. I mean, being the governor is a great job, and it's fun. And because, um, I've done this before, I know a lot of what the pitfalls are, some of which I created for myself when I was governor, and I have a different view of sort of how the government should work. So that was really, really attractive. What was really not attractive is 
is the idea that I was going to run negative ads. Um, I mean, there's plenty of negative things to say about your opponents, um, but it's sort of not the Vermont way. And I was not going to be the one uh, that made it the Vermont way. Um, so, uh, and and the, uh, there were other factors as well. I have three grandchildren who I adore and get to travel. One's, one's in California and two are in Philadelphia. And that would not have interfered with being governor, but it would have interfered with campaigning. Um, I modestly say it, I was a very good campaigner because that was indefatigable. Uh, for those that few of you who are old enough to remember those campaigns, uh, I used to run in the parades from side to side, not, not, and I, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to do that, and I wouldn't have been able to drive myself around the state, uh, which I frequently used to do. Uh, uh, I used to, what I call, shoot the circuit from Burlington to Bennington to Brattleboro to Windsor and back in one day, and think nothing of it. Uh, you know, so I, I didn't think I could do that. And I, I also have a, a, full, a summer schedule with, with grandchildren, and I wasn't going to abandon that. So then I'm thinking about, you know, how you, how you do that if you take two weeks out and go to California uh, around Labor Day uh, against an opponent who has 70% favorability rating. 